think about this, right? So if I if I want to get back, if I want to get back in, like if I've got A over B, things of the form A over B, and I want to get back just A, I just look at like A over 1, right? So if you look at this, you could, you could call this like D tilde or something, um, A over 1, right? A is an element of D. Um, the, the mass? You can walk through that door. Just walk through here, and, and you'll find one over there. Yeah, you. Oh, you're fine. Um. Oh, it's it's complicated. He'll he'll help you find it. You're you're fine. So the point is here. If you look at this set of a over one, which remember this is this is our shorthand for the more complicated, you know equivalence class of a comma one, right? Then then this is this is a subset, right? Of the field of fractions, right? It's a subset of the field of fractions which is isomorphic to D itself. Isomorphic means that there exists a homomorphism from one to the other, which is bijection, and preserves the uh, the operation of addition and multiplication here. So I was just saying, Audric is like this is the this is the subring that's isomorphic to D itself. So um, you know, people get in arguments about is a half equal to three sixths. That people can't get in arguments about it? No, like, that like sometimes three sixths and one half are not the same thing. Oh, oh I think okay. I'm going to disagree with him. See, I would say that, <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, you know, if, so example, if we take D equal to the integers, then F is exactly A over B such that, you know, A and B are integers and b not equal to zero. This is literally the rational numbers. We have formally constructed the rational numbers, though. I haven't assumed their existence. I've shown you how you can build them from scratch as an equivalence class of integers. Right? And with respect to that construction, it is definitely the case that 1 comma 2 is equal to 3 comma 6 because 1 times 6 is equal to 2 times 3. That means that one half is equal to three sixths. There's no debate. These are the same number. If you're talking about a rational number, you've already made an agreement that you're working with equivalence classes of fractions. Yeah, that's what it says. You could say that these are different fractions, perhaps. But that is a dangerous conversation to have with an algebra student who doesn't know how to factor, much less understand what an equivalence class is. So these are, these are equivalent fractions, but they are the same number. They are equal. I, I got to look back at my notes to see exactly what it says. Anyway, that's, that's my, uh, you know, you can argue with me if you want, but, but you'd be wrong. So, um, <laughs> so, so what's, the, what's the opposing point then? The opposing point is they want to come up with some sort of intermediary word for the pair of numbers which forms the fraction and say, like, that's a different pair of numbers. One and comma two is a different pair of numbers than three comma six. But they won't say pair of numbers because they want to make it more confusing for students who don't quite understand it. So they say something like, the fraction one half is different than the fraction three halves, three sixths. But your whole childhood education, you've been taught things like one half is equal to three sixths. Those two fractions are equal. And you see, when you have an instructor come in and tell you otherwise, it's not cool. I've never had that happen, but. Oh, oh these people exist. Oh, uh, we shouldn't do that. All right, anyway. Um, okay, so first of all, that's the, the, the biggest example of this is the rational numbers, right? Yeah. But another example 
is if you take the domain to be polynomials with integer coefficients. This is an integral domain, all right? That's an integral domain. It's commutative ring with identity. It's got no zero divisors, all right? Then the field of fractions for this is things of the form a of x over b of x, such that a and b, a of x and b of x are what? Are polynomials with integer coefficients. B of x is not the zero polynomial, right? This is not the rational numbers, right? This is a field. What's its prime subfield? See, the characteristic of this f, you can argue, is? No, it's, it's got zero. It's zero. Yeah. zero. Yeah. yeah. It contains a copy of z, so of disomorphism. So the, the prime subfield here would be the rational numbers. Am I out of time? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Leave early. I don't even, those words don't even make sense to me. <laughs> your dear, your dear, your dear's, your dear's got a schedule, and it's killing time. So, um, <laughs> so what this is is a particular set of rational functions. It's rational functions whose formulas are formed by polynomials that have integer coefficients. Right, so there are some rational functions which wouldn't figure into this. Like, for example, if you had the rational function, I don't know, square root of 2 times x plus 7 over pi plus ex, this is not an element of f, right? So it's got some rational functions, but not all. Yeah, if you're talking about rational functions built from real polynomials. Ah, real polynomials, next example. If D is the set of real polynomials, then F is, is equal to, it is actually rational functions this time. Because it's just the quotient of two polynomials, real polynomials, right? I'm getting tired of writing the same thing every time. <laughs> yeah, but the point is that this is rational functions. The set of rational functions is a field. Every rational function has a multiplicative inverse if it's non-zero. The number, the constant function 1, is its multiplicative identity. Um, another example is d equals to polynomials with coefficients from z mod p. This is, again, an integral domain. You can prove this. All right, what's the field of fractions? <laughs> you know what I'm going to write, right? <laughs> Notice that this f Basically, zp is a subset of zpx, right? Which, up to isomorphism, is a subset of f. I'm going to put some quotes on that, because that's not quite accurate. Put some scare quotes on that subset. Because it's not, it's not technically zpx, which is a subset of f. It's an isomorphic copy of it, in terms of those equivalence classes. All right. All right. But my point to you is that there is also an isomorphic copy of z mod p inside f. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's one to one by so it's, it's easy to see that the characteristic of this field is what? Is it? I don't think it is. Oh, z p. Oh, it's p. Sorry. It's p, right? Because you're building the fractions yeah. with z mod p material. So if you add any of those to themselves p times, right. you get zero. So the characteristic of this field is, is P. This 
is an infinite field characteristic with characteristic P. Yeah. Huh? Exactly. That's my feeling about this before this construction. I have this sort of ingrained idea, oh, characteristic P means finite field. No, there are infinite fields that also have characteristic P. Now, there is no finite field with characteristic zero. That's also true. But that doesn't mean that there doesn't exist an infinite field with characteristic not equal to zero. It doesn't work like that. This is an example. Yeah. Looks like an angry bird. Oh, with this, with this, with this scare quote. Ah! I should play Angry Birds more. This is an enjoyable game. Mm. Well, my dream of talking about polynomials today seems to have seems to have died. Um, but the next thing up here is polynomials. And so I'll tell you what we do in the next section. We've been working with polynomials as if they make sense, right? But we never really explained how you construct a polynomial. In the next section, I actually describe how we can construct polynomials formally and justify the calculations that we always do with them. So it's kind of a formal construction in the same sense of this. It's also one of those sort of constructive things. But we also, um, we soon are going to get into the next series of lectures actually are all about using polynomials to construct things. So like we're all about some polynomials coming up and we get back into factoring in a more abstract sense and everything like that. So, so shockingly, we'll leave early today. <laughs>